The Quick Diz Takes podcast is a Quick Diz Takes production. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner. Oh boy. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Quick Diz Takes Podcast, episode number 67. I am your host, Tim LeBeau, joined today by Miss Sarah Castano. Hey, howdy, hey. And Mr. John Castano. Oh, hello. I wish we could say we had the Fab Four here today, but we are down to our just our news crew. Um, We're fourless. We are, yeah, the Fab Three, um, which is okay. We're going to do a little um, favorite sit down and quick service at Epcot to finish off that little little series we've been doing. And then we will vote a attraction off and then we will put a, not a celebrity, but a entire, well, I don't know if I want to call it a franchise. There's two movies. One, the second one, I'm not even sure if anyone's even seen. I don't think a lot of people want to go see it. But the first one was popular, and that movie was Independence Day. And we're doing it in theme with July. And I know this this podcast will be coming out a little late for July Fourth, but hey, we got a ton of podcasts recorded. We got to yeah, we got to do things in a certain order, and that's just the way things go. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the Epcot best sit down and quick service. Actually, Sarah's got something, and I got something. We are edging close to well okay here's the deal so these these podcasts that we do with like the three of us or usually the four when steve's here i count that technically we're only on 67 actual quick diz takes podcast episodes of those variety however we are actually this will be 99 i believe when it comes out and so the 100th episode will be the 100th total episode, counting the news, one, one or two of my solo shows, and a couple of things Chris, Chris and I had done way back when. Um, so we may have something special for that, but I'm not quite sure yet. But anyway, obviously, I think, you know, it's awesome that we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna actually get to 100. And thanks for the support to everyone out there listening. And please, we're going to start a Facebook group. I was just telling Sarah before the show because a lot of you guys like to DM me. Seems to be the only interaction I have, um, which is great and all, but I would love to get a little more chatter going. So I'm going to start a Facebook group and see what that brings us. Um, And I will let you guys know when that's up via social media and we'll go from there. Um, But without further ado, unless Sarah has anything for us, did you have something to say, Sarah? I just wanted to let people uh, make sure we did not forget if you wanted to lead off tonight with the results of the last Mm. time we met, we had a tie on our attraction face off between the flight of Peter Pan and Buzz Lightyear Space Rangers. We did take to social media and I posted to Twitter. We kind of put a couple polls out there um, via Facebook and I, it was pretty close. We got a lot of, a lot of responses. I think the post that Tim had sent out on Facebook was almost a thousand if not more than that, I don't know. We lost one one point three thousand. That's a lot. That's a lot. So I did not count all one point three thousand. Um, at five o'clock on whatever day that Tim put it out there, um, I had tallied up what we had, and so at that point, along with the Twitter results and what Tim had looked at afterwards, we did have a winner of Peter Pan's flight. So Peter Pan's flight stays, and goodbye to Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin. So I made the mistake of not putting that as a poll originally. So Sarah counted those votes. Then I skimmed over all the votes. And then I put a poll vote afterwards. Didn't get as many results because people had already voted. But Peter Pan, by, by the time it was all said and done, they, they, it, it pulled away quite significantly. So there's no doubt that it won there. And I'm not surprised. Um, but anyway. All right. So let's get into the best sit down and... Um, quick service at Epcot, so we can, um, I thought it would be easy, but 
Yeah, because there's so many restaurants and stuff. Like, I, start, I started thinking about it, and I'll start because I never do. So once in a while, I try to mix myself in, you know, as, as the starter, the starter offer. Um, and I was stumped right away because I, quick service wise, nothing like jumped out at me at the um, at Epcot. And then as I thought about it more and, you know, I was the only thing I could come up with really that because the electric umbrella was there. I never cared for it. Um, but in the land pavilion, you have sunshine seasons and there's nothing in particular like Ronto Roasters or Satoli Cantina that like jumps out at me there, but everything is always decent. It feels well done for a quick service. It doesn't, I don't feel like I'm getting like one of those kind of like squished or soggy hamburgers in a bag kind of deal. If you guys know what I mean. Um, I just think it's decent. And as far as Epcot goes, that's the only thing that really jumped out at me. I'm sure you guys have something I didn't think of maybe, but uh, that was what jumped out at me there. And an honorable mention to, and I can't think of the name off the top of my head because I just popped in my head, but an honorable mention to the quick service outside of the Mexican pavilion as well, which is pretty decent. And then- Cantina de San Angel. San there you Angel. go. The restaurant I most frequent at Epcot is San Angel, but I would, I, I think the restaurant that's probably the best is Tempanito. Um, I said it again, and I say, you know, I said it before. I said it again. Nothing really knocks my socks off at Disney, really, but that's a pretty good, solid Japanese steakhouse, and um, I've enjoyed it when we've gone there a few times. So that's what I'm going to pick. And uh, I mean, you can't really go wrong with a Japanese steakhouse, right? I don't know. So no. I don't much to say about it. Everything's just decent there. It's nothing wrong with any of the food. It's good, and I think you know. In terms of Disney, it's a good portion size, and obviously it's a little expensive, but they all are. And uh, yeah, and the ambiance is good. So definitely my pick there. Oh, and also before I go to the next person, J Johnny, I saw a post today. I meant to tag you in it. Somebody went to Liberty Tree, and they were like, I don't know why no one talks about this place. It's the first time I ever went. It's by far the best food I ever had at Disney. Oh, well, delicious. Took them on. Jeez. I'll see it again. I'll tag you. Good. But anyway, uh, Sarah, do you want to go next? So I feel like Epcot is the park that I have sat down at the most restaurants. I feel like we have our fan favorites in the other parks and there are go-tos whenever we get there, like Liberty Tree Tavern. Um, and so in Epcot, I, I've actually tried the most restaurants in that park for a sit down. Um, so I had a really hard time deciding on my favorite sit down. Um, it's kind of a tie between two of them, the beer garden in Germany and um, the Coral Reef restaurant. So the, the Germany restaurant or the German restaurant, I should say, was not my favorite growing up. My father loves German food, sauerkraut, all the worsts. We used to joke around being like, it's the worst, but I'm thinking we were really funny. And that's like, cool, we're still going. Um, but inevitably I would try something new. I would enjoy it. They always had food for people who did not like traditional German fare, which was much appreciated by my sister and I, myself. Um, but what really got me is when you're in there, you really feel like you're, you've transported somewhere else. The atmosphere, um, the show that goes on, the performers, the music, the dancing, um, in the middle of eating, you just randomly tiggy, 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 tiggy. And everybody goes, hoi, hoi, hoi. It's just, it's a lot of fun to be there. So you've kind of got like that dinner and a show kind of atmosphere. Um, and Coral Reef, I had actually never tried until I think it was our honeymoon that we had gone there. And, you know, you get the big aquarium and it's got really good food as well. Um, and when you said Epcot, originally my brain went to World Showcase. Um, but I think it's kind of overlooked like Garden Grill just because it's not in the World Showcase, it's kind of in that pavilion tucked away a bit, but um, again, I enjoyed it with, from what I remember, it was really good food. I liked, you know, the the scenery, you got the, the big aquarium right there and that's really cool too. So um, it's kind of a tie between those two as far as cost. I don't know, I haven't been to the beer garden in years, um, probably since I went with my parents. Um, so, but I just remember it was like a buffet style. It was all you could eat. 
Um, so obviously you ate until you had your fill, but um, that's kind of my tie for sit downs. <laughs> All right, Johnny, what do you got? Um, well, my quick service is that the cantina at um, Mexico. Uh -huh. I uh, the cantina is the quick service. Yeah, Do you mean like, the I, I, I did say the quick service. All right. you, yes. Well, we all we all talked about our sit downs. Well, I'm talking about quick service. I talked service. about both. I didn't. I know. <laughs> oh, you then uh, they have a night. I mean, you get you know you get your basic Mexican you get your tacos, and I I like to get the tacos of uh, you get you get a chicken, beef, and pork. So you get the little, you get to you know experience everything and then you get a margarita uh yeah there it is i like there's the, the game changer yeah <laughs> i like the atmosphere of i mean I, I you're right you know it's a quick service but it's right on like uh little showpiece lagoon there and then especially if you if you can when you know they did have well during the illuminations i guess if you had timed it right and got a table you could actually you know yeah you have a very good view of the mm -hmm. of the show from sitting right there and you're not paying like the uh, like in morocco or you know you're not paying the sit down restaurant um uh, prices to get pretty much the same view that's it you know if you can get a view uh get a table during that time um as far as sit down my um, my favorite sit down, I would say, is um, the uh, Garden Grill is usually one we go to most of the time, mainly for breakfast. Oh, um, the cinnamon buns! Yeah, they got a good breakfast, and I mean the whole you get to I mean you get to just spinning around on above the uh, living with the land, and then it's usually it's as far as if you bring kids or something, it's probably one of the better character breakfasts. Like most of the time we've gone, I mean, they, they, you get two or three times at least with each character. So it's, it's nice for that character interaction with kids. Um, See, we yeah. need, St we need Steven here for that because he is a little, I, I, has anybody else noticed that he seems to be the resident expert on every time he speaks about someplace he went, he had a character <laughs> meal. Right, am I wrong? It seems like every time he brings something up, yeah. So I don't know, Johnny. I'm going to take your word for it, but we'll have to run that by Steve next time uh, we see him. Yeah, you know, <laughs> let let him uh, say if I'm correct or not. But uh, yeah, and then you you know you get the whole even if you go for I mean breakfast, I guess I guess you get you get fruits, but then uh, like lunch or dinner, you get the vegetable part, you know, the salad, so you can you're getting the food that. It was grown right downstairs on the, and then you can, you know, you eat the food and you can go ride the ride, see where it grew. And it's, it's all, it's a whole interaction. Part and if you're still hungry, you can jump off the ride and grab yeah. yourself a cucumber. You grab a little snack. Yeah. You know, uh, Steve, yeah. if you're listening, Steve, Man, I just popped in my mind. Uh oh. Were you with children all these trips or were you just experiencing these character breakfasts on your own? I'm not judging. I don't blame you. He's like, he, just curious. He, he has nephews. He likes I know, to collect I know, the autograph. I know. I know. I know. He's, a, he's a big autograph guy. Nope. He probably has like a sick autograph <laughs> book. Probably. <laughs> yeah. But that, as, right. far, as far as my, oh. I, I like the look of um, San Angel in in the Mexico Pavilion. Mm. I, I mean, it's not the greatest restaurant, but that <laughs> that I mean, I can just I just like going in there. But it's, it's it would be it's a cool place to get to sit down, and if the food yeah. is better and eat. But just because of you know the ride goes right by, it's like, um, like I'm drawing a blank on the name. The one that goes through Pirates and Disneyland. It's kind of that same. The Blue Lagoon. The, yeah, Blue Bayou. Yeah, and a then, Blue uh, Bayou. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so you get the you know the ride. Goes, it's just the ambiance of that place is really cool. But it would just be nicer if the. I think the food outside at the quick service is better than inside. So but it fluctuates. Um, it's never outstanding, but there's been there are times where it's better than like for a stretch than other times. It's just weird. Yeah, you think you'd, you'd think it'd be more 
last few visits, it, I can tell you, it has not been a good place. Because that was a place we would, I mean, I think we went there. We've gone there a couple of times in our trip. So the last, the last years, we just, I mean, not even a thought to go in there just because. Side note. People say it's not good. You can't see the menu. It's so dark. I hate that. That's the worst. I oh. know. And you really can't. It's bad. Like I have to. Yeah, you have to I, use I the light on your phone. phone. I have no choice. Yep. And it's not because of my poor vision. I'm telling you, everyone has to do it. Mm -hmm. I remember like five um, or six of us went there and we're all, everyone was like, can't see the menu. <laughs> so. Maybe that's intentional. Um, I was chatting with a friend of mine before um, we recorded tonight too, just kind of um, making sure I didn't forget anything. And because I was talking to her about how um, it's Tutto Italia Ristorante now, but it used to be Alfredo's. And the gentleman who invented the Alfredo sauce recipe, I guess that was like his restaurant. And it was, I was talking about how amazing it was. And I haven't been in this new place, but we we're just kind of talking about things. And she had mentioned that the, I'm going to butcher this, the Choza de Margarita, that little stand just outside the Mexican pavilion before you get to the pyramid, that they are also technically a quick service. They have like empanadas and she should grab a taco or like a churro or something as she goes around. So that kind of does it too, but not as much as the um, the cantina. But we were talking about that too. And um, so and how you, she always appreciates that one because you can get a margarita there as well. Have you gotten the margaritas at the, at the outside place? Yeah. Are they? Is, is it just as good? No, I mean, it, it's, it's, they're good, but it's just your, your, they're all pre made in the blenders thing. Too. Yeah. So but I mean, they, they have, I usually, I always get just the regular one, which is fine, but you usually get like the, there's one I that's get like, like a strawberry like, or fiesta. It's three colors. It's like, the fiesta, it's like yes. a little, it look, I mean, it looks nice. It's strawberry traditional and like mango. It's like three different yeah, colors. Something like that. So you can't get the avocado margarita out there? No, you not that one. No, it's these are all just frozen yeah. ones. It's not going to do it for me. Nothing on the racks. I love that avocado margarita. Oh, it's, the only, it's the only one I, I love it. Oh, it's so good. Anyway. Yeah. So good. So yeah, good. So, Sarah, you didn't mention your quick service, or is that the quick service you're mentioning? So my quick service is the cantina as well. Oh, okay. Um, but um, my probably the reason that one is my favorite is because of the little... Um, the covered portion outside. So a lot of the outside seating on quick services, it's all open, or maybe you kind of have to like time it just right to get a table that has an umbrella, but this is like over a nice little canopy. There's mm -hmm. indoor seating as well as outdoor covered. And then there's like a few tables out in the sun. Um, but you guys were talking about illuminations. The indoor is only open if the rest, because that's another restaurant, right? It's there. like an overflow, isn't it? No, it's the, it's the Hacienda, the San, San oh, yes. Angel. So, but that's not always open. So they do allow you to, when you buy quick service, mm -hmm. you can't go sit in there, but that is a separate sit down restaurant too. Um, but so you guys are talking about like watching illuminations at night. And so my favorite time was not for illuminations, but when the millennium celebration was going on and the tapestry of nations parade was going by, that was like the prime spot to get it. And so our family would always try and stake out a spot at that place because you had really good food it was quick you could sit outside in a covered area and watch the parade go by so that was kind of our go-to um but i feel like and i know you kind of experienced this when you came down with us last january is when we go to world showcase we walk around and we go we should probably get something to eat we should probably get something to eat we've been drinking for a little bit we should probably get and we don't get anything to eat until we get like close to the end of the world showcase unless we have an adr for a restaurant in the world showcase um, so I feel like we kind of skip a lot or we'll grab like, um, the last time we went down, it was flower and garden. So we were able to get, like, I got a carrot cake and you got, was it a clam boil or a, some kind of a boil like plate a, and it yeah. had like crawfish in it, yeah. but that was from like the American thing. But I don't think that's, that wasn't from Regal Eagle, was it? Or was no, it that it little was, stand? It was from the stand on the right side. Uh, it was a festival stand though. No, it's, um. Oh. Is it hops and something? Hops and barley, hops and it's something like that. I don't know. It's, it's all it was it was festival food, but I think it's yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And you can grab like a funnel cake or something or other, but I feel like we kind of pass a lot on quick service just because either we're beveraging or we know we have you know a sit down reservation coming. So I mean I feel like I have the most sit down restaurants in that place. I mean in that park, but not so much of the quick serve. Hops and barley. Hops they should have the 
those festival stands just, be, oh, I mean, they pretty much are, I guess they are always, always there now because there's so many festivals, but those are the best food offerings because like you said, like a lot of times if you're doing the around the world, you just, you're more op, apt to stop at those. I just, uh, when I went down my last recent trip, I, I just stopped at everyone along yeah. the way. Well, m- most of them anyway, I tried to stop at everyone and they're, you know, between my aunt and myself, I think we dropped 180 bucks total, but it was worth it. Like about the amount of food and drink I got it was right. not awful. And the variety. It was you know, pretty good too. Yeah. Yeah. There's usually something in every one of them that you. Mm. We were looking at the choices. They released yeah. the menus for. Um, you got to try something. Food and wine for a while. We're down there coming up in a couple of weeks. And I'm so excited to try food from the Greek um, festival booth just because we've talked about adding pavilions and Greek was always, you know, Greece was my list and. So I'm just excited to, to try that out and see what they got. We just made a rule that no matter what, what was on the menu, like if, even if we got to one that we didn't like, we just had to pick something because we had a bunch of gift cards we needed to use up before we left anyway. And so um, that's what we didn't. I wasn't, the only thing I, would, I think I would say I was disappointed in was uh, oddly enough was Italy had a stand with a uh, pizza and it was just one of the mill pizza it was nothing it was just blah, which I was surprised about, but everything else was really good. And like, they had duck at the French pavilion, it was delicious. And the uh, beignets there we had, the dessert were good. The drinks were good, so. All right. It is that time again. And this thing, this series seems to be going, has been going on since like December. But uh, I'll let my friend, do the introduction. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble! Uh, Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna eliminate an introduction. Um, (laughs) And there's only three of us, so we can't have a tie, which is kind of ideal. We are not going to be needing help this week. Okay. Spaceship Earth. So we have Spaceship Earth. I do want it right there. And the three caballeros. Um, and it was almost the people mover, and that would have been a very, very difficult situation for me. All right, Johnny, start us off. Well, uh, Spaceship Earth. I mean, there's not really much to compare the two. I mean, Spaceship Earth's the icon of the park. You get to actually ride in the icon. You get to go, you know, unlike other things. Uh, I don't know. It's just, I've always liked that ride. It's always been one of my favorite rides in, you know, in all of Disney World. I mean, that, and then a boat ride that utilizes screens for the most part, and then just has some cool old animatronics at the end. It's not really going to beat much. So, you know, Spaceship Earth doesn't have to, I, I mean, I don't I don't think it, I know they want to upgrade it, but I'm happy with them not upgrading it, so it'll still win for me. Um, so like Johnny, I also am going with Spaceship Earth um, for the reasons that he said, but I think it's kind of one of those very original concepts. Like he said, it's the icon of the park. I do enjoy Three Caballeros. I like the fact that it's inside of a pavilion it's like not a traditional ride um but it doesn't really necessarily match with the country like it doesn't really talk about the culture or something like the i'm not saying like those circle vision those 360 films are the most exciting and enthralling things that get people in but at the same time at least those talk about the culture and that kind of was what the original plan of epcot was um so we have talked before i don't know if it's been on the podcast or not but we have talked about revamping it and what they could do. And I know we've kind of toyed with Coco because that we'd be okay with it because it was themed around the culture of the Mexican people. And that would be good to fit in there. Um, so I'm going with Spaceship Earth. I just, I love it. Yeah. Make that three. Make that a 3-0 victory for Spaceship Earth. Three Caballeros. First of all, it wouldn't have beat Spaceship Earth anyway. I don't really care for it. Well, and when I'm on a boat ride, I wish, you know... I won't count Jungle Cruise. It's a little different of a boat ride, but when I'm on that like Pirates of the Caribbean style boat ride, it just you know, where's my drop? I don't even have a drop in there. Yeah. Well, isn't the drop. drop in isn't the drop in Pirates because it's 
goes over or it's supposed to go under like the the railroad it's yeah, to make room but, for still, that. but it's still there you it's know drop. gives you a little drop a little excitement oh, oh. i wish pirates drop was bigger i kind of do too like a third like just a good like 30 footer you know nothing crazy nothing crazy just 30 feet 30 feet's not that bad well well you're not expecting the one at pirates that's pretty startling as it is then the ones in Disneyland, there's two of them in Disneyland. They're a little bit bigger than the one in Disney World, I believe. I'll have to look that up, but I don't know. But anyway, I was just saying, like, I don't know, there's just nothing. And it's funny because I've had a couple interviews with people. I don't know if you guys have heard the episodes, and they like Pirates, and they like the three Caballeros. So, I mean, if you like the, if you like the IP, I get it. I just, the, I just didn't think they did a great job with the ride, is all I'm saying. I think it could have been done a little bit better. I do like the animatronics at the end, but I don't know. Anywho. All right. So that was easy enough. It's always so easy when you have three of us because it's pretty much going to level two. You also have three people who love Spaceship Earth. Yeah. And I think if Steve was here, I think it would be the same thing. So I don't think I had much of a chance. But anyway. All right. So this week we decided to put an entire movie versus one actor or actress um into the park so we went with independence day because we had this idea around july 4th even though this is not going to be around july 4th it'll be close enough um so yeah independence day how did you guys go about this did you throw did you make a whole land did you just throw it on an attraction johnny what did, what, did, what did you come up with i did a whole it all four parks but it's Whoa, only wow. okay it's only on the fourth of july so you have to be so like so it's a Mac- Mickey's not so independent today. No, it's just day. one like one <laughs> one attraction <laughs> revamp type thing. And you can rebrand it every year. No. <laughs> well, so Magic Kingdom would be you got Bill Pullman in the Hall of Presidents, and just on the Fourth of July, instead of Lincoln, you know, you go through the whole spiel, but instead of Lincoln giving the speech. He stands up and gives his Independence Day speech at the end, you know, before they go. Iconic. In the, uh, on, on their mission. So that's the Magic Kingdom. Um, uh, what was, oh, uh, Epcot would be, you, you, um, Soren would be redone to the, you're, you're flying when, which which was that? Which that the like the first one, the one uh, where Will Smith crashes that at the end where he crashes at the end. But you're that is themed to that whole you know scene. You're, you're, so the you're, part where he punches the alien at the end, like no. goes, welcome to Earth and punches it. That could be in there, but the, the whole thing is no. I'm just saying, is that what you're talking about? That, that scene, yeah. scene yeah. yes. So that Soren is just you're in that. Um, in that scene, basically, you're flying with you're one of the fight. I guess you're one of the fighters I, flying through the whole thing. There's a specific part in this that's very, very important. Oh my god! That's probably my favorite part. I want to add something to this when you're done. When uh, <laughs> it's going to play a big, you know, you're flying, you're doing the whole thing, fighting, and then that that one where Harry Connick Jr. dies. That that's like a main focus of the thing because he's he's horrible. Um, just okay. for me, I just can't stand him. All right. The man well, Angela, never Angela, done to you. Angela Martin might disagree with you in the office. She thinks he's a very talented man. <laughs> but I will, no, I, that singing is. Oh. Know, I have a hatred for Phil Collins from Paracon Jr.'s music is right right below him. Phil oh, Collins. Uh, I love uh, me Phil. Oh, me, yeah, me too. Uh, I just want to add to that because thinking about it, and, uh, and you know, we had spoken to Andy about Alien Encounter. I think yeah. they should dress cast members up as aliens at the end of that and then you get the punch you get the punch one yeah to yeah. finish it oh yeah sure <laughs> anyway <laughs> and then um i always thought that was the funniest like scene <laughs> he gets he punches it welcome to earth yeah, he punches him and he's in the he's in the like the armored biomechanical suit so really it shouldn't do anything anyway but yeah whatever. you know <laughs> it's somehow a good movie though it is it's really not but it is um anyway <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh, I was at Hollywood Studios. See, I wasn't really sure where to place this. Maybe like over by like where 
uh, like the one man's dream thing is. This is more like a walkthrough. I figure when um, when they actually go to Area 51 and they see the aliens that they have held there, and maybe like they could replay that scene where you know there's an actor there um, playing like the the main doctor guy there. And, you know, it, it kind of plays in front of you as if you're in the movie going with the Hollywood studios theme of the alien, you know, mind controlling him, you know, just kind of a like a walk through interactive thing of seeing that scene. And then Animal Kingdom, it would just change flight of passage to um, basically the end of the movie. You, you could, I guess you could be, I say maybe, you know, you're the fighter. I'd say it'd probably be better if you are in, in specifically in like uh, Randy Quaid's um, <laughs> plane because they can go through the whole fight scene and then it ends with you, you know, going up into the spaceship, letting them look, uh, you know, the aliens welcoming welcoming you back, and then so destroy it. So we're not going to kamikaze into the spaceship. Well, I guess we could. I mean, but yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, that movie. I haven't thought about that movie in a long time until we decided to do this. Um, okay, Sarah. Uh, first of all, before Sarah starts, I just want to say that I, I am. I did not in any way, shape, or form go in depth with this as Johnny just did with four different parks. But just giving you a little, little warning. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> So mine also ties in all four parks. Yeah. Now I feel really bad. Everything's fine. Think of um, real quick. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so mine is actually going to be a road race series. It'll be held Fourth of July weekend, but only then. It does not. Like I don't know what I would do. Like if it lands in the middle of the week, it's going to land, and that's when the series is. Um, so it'll have a five, ten, a half, and a full. Um, the five K. So because running in. Right, a marathon in the middle of in July in Disney. Hey, you're real kind. Go ahead. Okay, they, Johnny, they were up. They were up against the wall against these aliens. If Listen, they that, and we can run. This, up. According, <laughs> according to President Whitmore, it wasn't going to be just an American holiday. It would be a holiday around the world. So okay. World Showcase. If you track that out, it's 1.2 miles. So you would have a modified 5K via 5K plus. So you'd get. Three laps in around the World Showcase since it is a holiday for the world. Um, the 5K <laughs> and the 10K would be held on the same day, except they would be held at night because with all of the spaceships around, it was very dark and it blocked out the light from the sun. So it had to be done either super early in the morning, 3 a.m., I don't know, or it'd be done at night after hours and you run around with glow sticks, mm. with like glow suits. Okay. And you uh, have to finish the race because the President Whitmore said, you cannot go down in the night and you cannot go down without a fight. <laughs> yes. Tim's on board with me. Um, so the 5K <laughs> would be around the World Showcase. It'd be a modified, it'd be like a 5K plus. So you do three full laps. You would end at the American Pavilion where Bill Pullman would be in there with your congratulatory speech. You would have um, a Will Smith actor there with his cigars. You cross the finish line. So that means I'm be smoking a lot, but not really because that's not good for health. It's Smoking is not allowed in the parks. That's why. You get, your, you, get, fake cigar. you get your cigar, but you have to go to the entrance and get out of the park to smoke it. Um, Fair enough. 10K would be five laps with a little bit of a behind the scenes um, through some of the pavilions just to kind of give you the extra mileage that you needed to hit the 10K. For the half in the full. Jesus. So here's where the other parks come in. To Magic Kingdom to Animal to Hollywood to Epcot is 13.7 miles. So we're going to have to trim some stuff out. I also don't know if that's from like the ticket booth to ticket booth, if that's from like driveway to uh, the huge parking lot, like we'd have to do a little bit of finagling there. Um, so you would start in the Magic Kingdom. You'd get your pep talk from Sam Eagle because it is a tribute to all nations fighting, but mostly America because it's our 4th of July. Um, and you'd kind of get your pep talk from him. You would end at the American Pavilion very similarly. You would have the big party at the end. Um, as far as the full marathon, you would obviously have to double back through some of those, but you would again end. You've got Sam Eagle there waiting for you to tell you how proud he is of you. And you'd have your full fireworks show that night, all red, white, and blue. And then the medals would reflect accordingly. 
um, instead of it being the dopey challenge, you would have, you know, the presidential Whitmore um, seal as your medal, that you'd get that if you did all of them. Um, so even the medals would be themed as well. So I didn't do a ride in each park, but I tied them all in. Of course, the medals has to be themed. That's why you won the race. Wow. Mm -hmm. And there will be no punching <laughs> because we don't condone those things. This is a happy place. I was going to. Well, you could bring back <laughs> Alien Encounter. And as you're no. running through Magic Kingdom, the alien comes you get to punch it as you run by. Why not? I kill, they kill the gas member. Like, you can at least punch one. I'd be like, taking it down a notch. <laughs> that is true. I thought that they killed him. I was listening to that. And I was like, oh, that's right. You kill someone in a ride every you show. You get blood dripped on you. It's nice. Uh, and Andy Mack was one of those people. <laughs> no biohazard there. That's fine. Thanks, Disney. So I was going to go with just, you know, I was going to rebrand Mission Space into a little adventure with Jeff Goldblum up to the to the ship. And that's where I'll start. But then you got me thinking now. So I think if we use the drones, can we simulate an entire huge spaceship covering the Magic Kingdom like it does in the movie? How many yeah. drones? I guess you need a lot of drones. Hey, listen, listen, there's no... <laughs> It's our independence day. There's no limitations to what we can do at Disney. Spare no expense. And now our budget. the ship could like, with projection imaging, could either blow up the Hall of Presidents like it does the White, the White House or Cinderella's castle. You know, take your pick. Oh, Gunner has, apparently Gunner has something he wants to say. Hold on. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> see, Hollywood Studios, I don't know what I would do with that in Hollywood Studios though. That's a tough one. I feel like if they brought, I mean, obviously I know they can't because they've reused that land, but like the Catastrophe Canyon. Yeah, if we had that, that yeah. Or like that kind of a piece. That'd be good. And then I would retheme Pandora to Area 51. And when you go through the queue to get the flight of passage, you'd be going, instead of going in to see Avatars, you'd be going in like they do in the movie to see the aliens and tanks. And that would work out. So, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. But these are going to be like, oh, yeah. I, 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 see, the thing is, I guess this is not going to be a 4th of July only attraction. This is going to be the month of July attraction. So the drones will fly over the top of the Magic Kingdom for a full month. Because that shouldn't be expensive. No, and people will continue to accuse that Disney is controlling the weather and we're inside a dome. And Which no one has any evidence suggesting that they don't or do or don't. So we don't know. Um, but yeah, that's where I'll go with that. And, uh, yeah, let's we'll throw an encounter in there too. So I want to, you know, I want someone to punch an alien. Even if it's a cast member, even if it's a cast member on cast member violence, I just want someone to get someone to simulate, you know, recreate that scene because one rowdy guest to me, that's the most iconic scene in the movie. Yeah. Because I just think like when the, the writers are just sitting there spit firing ideas. I just want, like, I want to shake the man's hand who was like, you know what? He'll open the space, he'll chase it down and have this big fight with this technologically advanced creature. And instead of just getting out of there, he's going to open it up, see what's going on, and then he's going to knock it out. <laughs> it's like they said, what's the most American thing this guy can do? All right. Good ideas. I like it. Um, and we're going to keep this one short, so we're going to get out of here. Um, yeah, so 100th episode on its way. I still haven't decided what we're going to do about that, but we'll figure something out. And we've got more guests coming. Um, so keep an eye out for those. She lands, he had texted me the other day. He's got his friends coming on. Got some friends that are in, the, in a business that is related to Disney. I will not give it away, but um, and amongst other guests. So keep an eye out for those. And of course, we'll be checking in with these as well here and there. And so we will see you guys next week. Have a good week.